climate change will not make Earth uninhabitable. Climate change will make Earth a living hell. In this video by Penguin Books UK, we spent some time with Neil deGrasse Tyson talking about a variety of things, climate change, whether the moon landing was fake, uh, does God exist, uh, the threat of artificial intelligence. I'm a fan of Neil deGrasse Tyson's. I think he talks about things uh, in a clear-headed scientific way that also manages to be entertaining, and which is why I want to share this video. It's not a new video. This is actually from five years ago. But um, I think it's really interesting, and I think you will too. So I'm actually going to keep my um, opinion to a minimum here and just share this with you, but then I'd like to know what you think in the comments. Have you really thought about what it would take to fake a moon landing. Because the rocket did launch. We all saw the rocket launch, okay? So there's hardware there. They're, they're like office buildings of blueprints for the design of the Saturn V rocket. The, the hundreds of, of engineering hours that went behind this and the records of those designs. If you wanted to fake the moon landing, you would have to fake all of these documents. And it just seems to me, it's way easier to just go to the moon. <laughs> Has anyone considered that? <laughs> just go to the moon. That's easier than faking all of this. So, uh, no, but yeah, we went to the moon. So climate change will not make Earth uninhabitable. Climate change will make Earth a living hell. In fact, I, I live in New York City where in our harbor we have the Statue of Liberty. And there she is holding the Declaration of Independence. And on her left arm and her right arm is the torch. If you melt the water ice that's on, on land, the ocean level will rise to reach her left elbow. So that takes out all of New York City and basically every other coastal city that we've spent thousands of years building uh, in the, since the dawn of civilization. So life will be very, very different. So the way I look at it is uh, there, there are people who want to colonize other planets, give us an escape route. We trashed Earth, let's move elsewhere and hope we don't trash that. Well, there aren't many places to move. You'll vaporize on Venus, so you're not going to Venus. Mars rotates once every 24 hours. That's kind of interesting. It's tipped on its axis, as Earth is, which means it has seasons. It has polar ice caps, the way we still do at this moment. <laughs> and there's evidence of running water on its surface. So there's a chance we could terraform Mars, my favorite word of the past few decades. You turn something that's not like Earth into something that's like Earth, so then you just move there. So here's the catch. If you have the power of geoengineering to turn Mars into Earth, then you have the power of geoengineering to turn Earth back into Earth. Obviously, this topic is more forefront in the news right now, certainly with American audiences because of Elon Musk and his prominence in the incoming Trump administration. I don't know if God exists. Deeply religious people are certain he exists. He or it. There are ardent atheists. My posture is, particularly in the monotheistic traditions, that God is typically described as being all-knowing, all-powerful, and all-good. Yet I look back through history, uh, in particular there is a, I, mean, I can choose many examples, but one, a famous example is an earthquake in Lisbon, Portugal. When was it? 1755, somewhere around there, 80,000 people died. By the way, that earthquake took place on All Saints Day, in the morning, 
when most people, Lisbon, one of the holiest cities in Europe, most people were in church. Churches were the largest structures of the day. If you have an earthquake, what's the first building to collapse? It's the ones that are the largest, the most susceptible. So people died in churches. Then there's a tsunami that basically wiped Lisbon off the map. Either God is not all good, if we define good as being in the interest of your health and longevity, that's a pretty simple definition of something that's good for you. Or God is not all powerful. But it's not clear whether God could be both of those at the same time for that event. So I, I take issue with what many people say God is. But there are other kinds of ways to think about God. There are enlightened religious people who would say, God is the manifestation of the laws of physics in the universe. I don't have a problem with that. But is God the person who tells you who you should mate with and on what, and what day you should eat what kind of food and what, who, you know, is that your God? That's different from this other one that maybe just sort of put the universe into place. So I don't really, concern myself much with it unless someone finds a way that any understanding of God can give me insight into making another discovery. And that hasn't happened yet. Um, there are many people who will, will see things happen to them that are in their favor. They say, oh, someone's looking over me. So that's a, that's a fascinating phenomenon when that happens. And what, when you analyze those situations, what you find is is that we as humans simply have a profound inability to understand statistics and probability. It's really that simple. And uh, it's a quick experiment. Line up a thousand people and give them a coin and have them flip the coin. And if whoever gets tails, tell them to sit down. So it's about half. So 500 people left. You repeat it. 250 people left. You know, 125, 60, 30. 15, 8, 4, 2, 1. This is it's a thought experiment. So half the people set, approximately half the people sat down every time they flipped the coin. Half of them get heads, half get tails. There's one person that's standing at the end. That person flipped heads 10 consecutive times. So who does the press go to? The press goes to that person and say, how do you feel about this? Well, I felt that head's energy about halfway through, and I kind of knew I was going to win. I felt, I, I saw heads on the thing. And did they interview anybody else who might have felt exactly the same way, but didn't flip heads 10 times in a row? Because they're on their way home now. They're not there for the interview. So we're thinking that this guy had some kind of clairvoyance about his fate, or that he prayed or whatever. And so, whereas every time you do this experiment, basically, somebody flips heads 10 times in a row. And so we don't know how to handle coincidences or things that are rare for you, even if they're common in total. So, yeah, no, whatever God is, God is not luck. We can demonstrate that mathematically. I always think it's fascinating to hear scientists talk about the divine, um, you know, of any discipline. Astrophysics seems to me to be particularly uh, germane to the subject. Um, up next, he talks about artificial intelligence. Personally, I'm not all that worried about artificial intelligence and robots taking over the world. But almost everyone I know who's an expert in it, they're worried. They're all worried. I'm reminded of Ray Bradbury, author of many great science fiction novel about Mars and, and other stories. He was once criticized. Someone asked him, Ray, why do you have all these apocalyptic, futuristic stories? Is this what you think we have in store for ourselves? And he says, I don't write these because I think that's what our future will be. I write these stories so that you know what future to avoid. And I said, ooh, that's deep. So the fact that we've had our share of films that 
show computer intelligence taking over. I think it spooked us. And a little bit of spooking is a good thing. It means you'll move forward. You'll step lightly. But here's my reasoning for why I'm not as afraid as AI experts. Every manifestation of computer ability that has arisen has been parsed into some task or set of tasks that we previously had undertaken and now the computer does it. So we used to build cars on an assembly line. Now robots build cars and cars are better than they have ever been. People think of robots that'll run around and they'll have all this high intelligence. Well, go back 40 years ago, 50 years ago. People were imagining robots, humanoid robots, and then the robot would then drive your car. No, not today. The car is the robot. So the idea that you would have what they call general intelligence, some kind of entity that can learn anything and do anything and do it better than any of us, I just don't see that as the direction things are headed. We'll have tasks, we'll get some really good computer to figure out how to do it better than we can, and then we, it happens. So uh, I'm, I'm not as worried, but if the concerns of AI experts are real and we, we need to heed them, yeah, there'll be a day when AI takes over and it'll make us their pets. Right. Um. <laughs> <laughs> we should all behave, learn how to behave better, because the day AI takes over, they're going to pass judgment on whether humans should continue or not in this world. Yikes. And again, this was some five years ago. Things with AI now have accelerated so rapidly. Uh, that is a rabbit hole you can Google yourself down into that uh, will scare the peanuts out of you. So I, I'm not sure I'm recommending you do that, but I do it from time to time. And every time I do, things have gone way further along. Uh, anyway, uh, always good to hear from Neil deGrasse Tyson. Let me know what you think of the comments.